In this five part series, we're going to go from this to this. It's a CNC machine of my own design, which I'm calling the Stupid Strong CNC. In this video, we're gonna work on the drive components. A big step forward, I know. Wow, look at this. Throughout the build, I must have assembled and disassembled this machine seven or eight times. Every step of the way, you need to put everything together, mark your next part, take it apart, and take it over to the drill press. Somehow, in all of that chaos, I got carried away and installed my X-axis ball screw without filming it. Not to worry, there is still plenty of work to do. So the Y-axis screw nut is just a little bit different. Rather than containing inside the uh, frame itself, it needs to go on the outside so that you can get the full range of the Y axis. And for whatever reason, I got the holes on this one right. So I just have to tap and then uh, screw through and hopefully this all lines up. This is maybe one of the easiest hand cranks. I'm thrilled. This, this axis worked perfectly. My rods are absolutely perfectly centered in the holes. I'm getting much better than that. I got the mounter motor, mounter motored. I got the motor mounted up to the coupler and then my bearing on the other side and here is the problem that was causing all my x-axis issues. I forgot to mention, I was having some x-axis issues. This is just a little too big, if you can see. Uh, so all I have to do is either raise this rail up just a little bit, which I don't think I need to because this is square to this bottom plate. Instead, I just need to grind off this little lip for whatever reason. I think just another manufacturing issue and then it should slide right underneath there, and then I will have a much better aligned and much cleaner looking now with the motor right up against instead of this coupler sticking out, x-axis. Okay, things are looking good. I just have two things I need to do. The first is I've almost nailed this screw, so I need to shim underneath this bearing, uh, about the thickness of a tin can is what I'm hoping. I bought this aluminum router mount made for the Bosch Colt on eBay for 29 bucks. If I could do this whole build over again, I would probably buy one of the entire Z-axis assemblies pre-made off of eBay as well. Next was a moment of truth, a test to see if my router ended up plumb level and square to the build plate. Right about there is just where it starts to move. I went to all four corners of the build plate and it's absolutely perfect. I don't know how I got so lucky right off the bat. I don't expect to be that lucky once I take it all apart and put it back together, but at least I know it can be that accurate. If I really put my weight here, it just starts to stick the paper. I can still move it around, but it's kind of dragging. So maybe I am impressed with that. Uh, you can see I've put on this motor and this motor. Last thing I've got to do is the Y, and I have to make something custom here. I didn't really have a plan for this because the coupler comes so far out. Eventually, I'm going to mount the motor backwards and use a belt and pulley to drive this axis. But until then, I'm just gonna get a piece of angle aluminum and build out a little mount so it's gonna stick out pretty far. But it turned out pretty good. Uh, I decided to only do two of the bolts. Now we're gonna move on to limit switches. And then after that, I can tidy up all the nuts and bolts and hardware. So I did a little after hours work yesterday, but I had visitors in the shop, so I couldn't film, but I got all the limit switches on. This is what I did for the Z axis. I just bolted it right to the side here, added a little extension plate, and now when it comes to the top, clicks off, good. For the X axis, I just added them to the back of the router plate. Now when this one slides side to side, it clicks here, and it clicks on this side. I ended up moving these limit switches for the X axis to the top rail because this router plate moves up and down and the wires just got in the way. I did pretty much the same thing 
I just added two switches on the cross member. And now this is not the best way to do this because ideally you'd have the limit switches stationary and have the cross member touch it so that we don't have wires moving with the whole gantry for the limit switches. But this was just so easy. Uh, instead of building custom brackets and everything, I could just literally bolt them right to the bottom of the cross member. And that completes the mechanical, I guess, side of this build. Uh, I'm actually ready to start with the electronics, except I need to take the whole machine apart, make sure all of my holes line up. So I've got myself a file. I got a lot of filing work to open up some of these holes so that everything lines up. And I need to countersink a bunch of screws and sand everything down, make it look pretty. So the whole machine's coming apart, then it goes back together, then we get to move on to electronics. Well, I've got it all taken apart and put back together. Look at that. I went through and made sure all of my holes were drilled and aligned and countersunk, spaced things so that the couplers were in the right spot. We're so close, I can taste it. I do not plan on taking this machine back apart. I'm hooking up the electronics. In the next video, we are gonna have a working CNC. Echo, turn the recording off. If you'd like to learn how to design parts to cut in a CNC machine like this, we sell an eight hour course called Fusion 360 for hobbyists and woodworkers. I'll leave a link in the description for a $30 off coupon. And in fact, you can watch me design this entire machine from the ground up as part of the extra credit section of that course.